no better setup for this kind of video than right here on the toilet. Yes, we're going to be installing a bidet. And yes, I have already made one, but this time it's going to be a little bit easier because in the last video, I kind of did it the hard way. I soldered something to copper piping, and I think that's kind of outside most people's skill sets or what they're willing to do. So today, we're going to do it just using basic tools, no soldering, be relatively simple, and I think you're going to love it. Let's get started. So let's go over the game plan. First, let's see what we're working with here. As usual, we've got two water supply lines, hot and cold. My plan this time to avoid soldering is I'm going to put T's on both of them. One of the, the side of the T is going to go to the sink, and the other side is going to go to the bidet or to the mix valve, which I'm going to mount on this surface here. And here's the ingredients. Like a good chef, we lay everything out we will need. Of course, the bidet, I will put a link to that below. A bunch of hardware. This you will probably either pick up at the hardware store or order. These are half inch NPT fittings. And then I got kind of impatient and I did order T's off of. Amazon, but they're still in transit. So I just went to Home Depot and I bought these So this is that it's a T and then I've got a compression adapter here It'll start making sense what this is for in a bit. So this is that and of course a couple of uh, Sink supply lines where one end is 3 8 inch and the other end is half inch which we will be putting on top it's threading to these NPT fittings because these NPT fittings will be going in here, this is where you will supply your hot and your cold. I'll figure out which one is which in a bit. And of course your tools, all the regular uh, suspects, drills, maybe a channel lock, and a hole saw kit. Let us begin our journey to a cleaner butthole. First, kill the supply lines. Turn them off and make sure that we have indeed depressurized the water supply line. Open up those supply lines, twist counterclockwise, and then should be able to undo them by hand. They'll probably spurt out a bit of water, have a towel ready. Eh, not that bad. All right, let's prepare our teas. So, again, this is a 3 8 inch tea all around compression. I got this one from Home Depot. Um, it kind of expects you to be threading this into pipe, that's why it has all these extra fittings, but we will not be needing them, we just want the T. And hey, if you can find just the T, all the better. Next, we'll have this compression adapter, 3 8 inch female attached to a 3 8 inch female swivel. And it comes with these rubber gaskets, we're going to put one in each end, okay? We're going to thread this end right in here, nice and tight. Now this other end is going to go into our water supply line. That's how I'm going to make it fit, and we're going to do this twice. Same rule here, until hand tight, and then or finger tight, and then an additional quarter turn with your tool. Next, we're going to reconnect the uh, sink supply lines. Same rule, hand tighten, then quarter turn with a channel lock. Alright, now it's mix valve time. So, we're going to take these half inch NPT fittings, and we're going to cover them in Teflon tape. Tape it the same direction that we're going to twist it in, so that... Or wait a minute. Keep it in the exact opposite direction that you're going to twist it in. So if we look at it top down like this, so if this fitting goes in top down, we're twisting it clockwise to tighten it. So we're going to take our tape here and we're going to apply it counterclockwise so that it does not unravel as we tighten it. Leave the threads exposed here because as we tighten it, it might shear some of the tape, and then the tape's just gonna go floating around in the water, and it'll probably clog up your mix valve or go somewhere where it's not supposed to go. Gonna be very generous here, 
probably five to seven times. It's probably going to do the trick. I'm going to put it in, hand tighten, and then use your channel locks to finish the job and do the same on the other end. I kind of want to be pretty strategic about where you place it. So what I've done here is I've taken the cover plate and I'm pushing it on. This is where it's going to wind up going. And I'm just going to kind of mock it up and play around with this until I feel, okay, this is kind of both a comfortable enough height for me to reach it easily from where I'm sitting, but also making sure that the final position that I pick, that I still have enough space in the back to go plumbing. So like, for example, up here, I probably can't put it because that's where the sink basin is. I won't be able to work. I won't be able to drill it in. Down here is probably fine because there's nothing there on the other side. So I'm going to mark this up. All right, so I've got my markings here. Here and here, this is where the plate's going to go. Now, it's very crucial which side you flip it to because these holes aren't the same size. If you notice, the valve here or the mix valve here, this end is where your I guess, shower head or hose is going to rest on top of. So this hole here needs to go on the bottom. So it's going to sit like this. For this end, before I stencil the holes in, I'm using a level to make sure that it'll be level. Now trace these holes and the cutting can begin. The reason I have this hole saw set. This one, of course, I got from Harbor Freight, but it does the job. I'm just going to have to pick roughly the right size for these. A tiny bit bigger is probably fine. And in fact, might make it easier. Off camera, I had to expand the hole a little bit. I just kind of ran a drill bit in and around these because it wasn't fitting. See it? Oh, yeah. There it is. Absolutely beautiful. We're gonna fasten it to the surface. They provided a couple of screws, just two. Couldn't quite fit my drill over here, but fit perfectly fine over here. Now it's supply line time. Um, so here on the diagram, we've got hot on the side, cold on the bottom. In my case, this is the hot, this is the cold, and I've got an assortment of supply lines. We'll see which ones I need. So these are, this is 12, this is 16, this is 20. I just bought all kinds just in case because I didn't know what I was going to encounter in here. So far so good. I got the hot side all hooked up. Now if you're wondering which case do I use Teflon, which case do I not, just pay attention to what type of connection you're making. So these are compression fittings. You see that they have a rubber gasket inside and that's, that's on both sides. Teflon tape isn't necessary here and in fact if you do use it you're likely to suffer a leak. If you do use Teflon tape when you have bare metal against bare metal, that's when you want to use tape. I wound up using a 20 inch hose going from the cold supply line and only a 12 inch hose coming in from the hot supply line. Finger tight plus quarter turn, no need to be Hercules, otherwise you'll just deform the rubber gasket and you'll spring a leak. Alright, almost done. The handle, we're going to put in this uh, set screw right here, right into the handle on and then we tighten the set screw to secure the handle to the fixture. Actually, wait a minute. No, no, no. No, no, no. <laughs> Where are my manners? Gotta do this. I have this piece right here which hides in this little tray that goes here on the bottom we're just gonna screw that in okay now I don't have anything big enough because this expects an allen key but what do you know this a regular drill bit hex end fits just perfectly so we're just gonna tighten this up with some channel locks and call it a day. 
already connected the shower head or whatever to, or the bidet end to the hose, and now the other end here at the bottom. Once again, no tough on tape, has a rubber grommet. Wonderful. Let's see how I did. <laughs> I put it backwards. Excuse me. Okay, much better. All right. Moment of truth. Are there any leaks? Let's turn on the water one by one and see what how we did. Okay. Don't see anything escaping here. Nor here. Great. Let's turn on the hot. Okay, nothing here, nothing here, wonderful. I think we did all right. What about over here? Okay, let's check it out. Oh, jeez, okay. That was on. <laughs> all right, okay. Yeah, you don't have to be this intense, of course, of course. And I think it has a selection switch here. Yeah, it does. I prefer this one. Much gentler. And of course, as a matter of warning, you do want to turn this off when you're done. Also because this thing is designed a bit strangely. There's no check valves. That's what I've noticed happened with my last house. It circulated the cold water into the hot water circuit. And then the water temperature would just be completely off from where it's supposed to be in the faucet so you would like have cold water coming out of the hot just a weird design thing i don't know if there's like supposed to be more to this but just shut it off if you have weird temperature things going on around your house just check this first just turn it off and of course in the coming days just keep a close eye on this a small leak might make itself known and that might mean you need to Tighten it a bit, or maybe over tightened. Check your rubber gaskets, and might have to add a little bit of extra Teflon tape on this end. And that's how you install a bidet. And I will keep going on this crusade until every single person in America and the rest of the world beholds this wondrous invention. Quit smearing poo poo all over your butt. It's uncivilized. You're a heretic. Get a bidet. Just do it. And besides, TP? Hot, hot commodity these days. You're gonna look real smart with one of these when there's a shortage. And that's all I have for you today. I hope this has been helpful. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go enjoy having the cleanest butthole on the East Coast. Yeah! <laughs>